Hello, everybody. Hello. It's time. It is CPA time. And I know you're wondering, what is CPA time? Well, it is three girlfriends that spend time together talking about different things. And we hope that our conversations will give you some inspiration, some information, and some nuggets of wisdom. So I'm going to introduce my co-host to this podcast. Uh, the C is Miss Carolyn Leslie. Well, hello, everyone. We're so glad that you're joining us tonight. Thank you. And the P is Miss Pam Norrell. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And the A is me, Almeda Johnson. And so that makes up CPA. So it's CPA time. Whatever platform you are listening to or watching us, make sure that you share with others and you comment so that we'll know what you're thinking about what we're talking about. So this is how we get started each time. Uh, we have a situation and this is a real life, true situation. But guess what? We only have one side of the story, just one. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to read the situation. My two co-hosts have no idea what the situation is. And after we've done that, we're going to talk about it. So is everybody ready? We're ready. We're ready. All right. This is the title. Hold on to your hat, to your weeds, to your wigs. <laughs> this is the title. It says, help. My addict wife may be cheating. Help. My addict wife may be cheating. My wife and I have been together for five years and we have a three-year-old daughter together. We have been through some rough patches as my wife has had bouts with addictions, but I've always loved her through it all. Her addictions didn't start until we had our daughter. Her most recent addiction has been alcohol to the point that she gets blacked out drunk. Multiple times a month, she goes to bars. Otherwise, she drinks at home. I developed severe pain in my, and I think this word is nether, N-E-T-H-E-R, nether regions, mm -hmm. and went to the doctor and it turns out that I had an STI, a sexually transmitted infection. I've only been with my wife. She says nothing happened, but like I said above, she gets blacked out drunk occasionally. So what do I do? Was she right? Is she lying? Should I leave or stay? I don't have any actual solid proof of any of this. And of course, she denies anything. But honestly, how would she know? I'm afraid if I leave, something will happen when my daughter is with her. If I stay, at least I'll always be there to assist. And for our daughter, even if she is messing up. My wife has beat addiction before, but now she doesn't want to go back to rehab and she refuses AA. Any advice would be appreciated. I've already talked to her about it. I can narrow it down to her last escapade since she does get tested regularly due to a lot of bacterial infections. So it had to have been around her last visit to the bar. That's the only thing I can think of. So these are his questions. So what do I do? 
Was she right? Is she lying? Should I leave or stay? <laughs> all right. I think, I think first of all, you need to, he needs to make sure that it is a sexually transmitted infection. Because he did mention that she, you know, has to get treated for a lot of bacteria in her body. Now, as you were reading, I thought about both, you know, they're the lesser of two evils. She may have been drunk and may have been raped or may have had intercourse with somebody that she cannot, you know, remember. And the worst part is that he came, he believes that he has a sexually transmitted infection. So <clears throat> I think if this is the first time this, ha this has happened and he loves her and he chooses to stay with her regardless of what he thinks, you know, even if it may be true with him having the, the infection, mm -hmm. if you love her and she for the life of her cannot figure out what happened or can't remember what happened, what do you do? I mean, leaving may not really solve it because she needs someone to, you know, constantly take her to her treatments or uh, did you mention that she, you say she beat it before, right? She has had bouts where she has gotten drunk to the point of blacking out. And to clarify that sexually transmitted infection is gonorrhea. Okay, so someone somewhere has been doing something <laughs> because it's only one side. I want to be fair in my thinking and, and, and how I give my perspective because is he telling the truth? And if he is telling the truth and this has happened once and maybe you can work it out with her and maybe y'all can make it, maybe you can get her to go back to her meetings or her treatments or whatever she's receiving and uh, try to work that out the best way you can instead of leaving her. Uh, it's like you're leaving her crippled and handicapped, even though he has ended up with gonorrhea. We don't know, you know, we don't know where he really got it from. He says he's not cheating. He's only messing with his wife. So there's a lot to be inferred, you know, we don't know that. So I would say stay with her and try to get her treatments if you can get her to go. And maybe you and her can go to uh, maybe some kind of uh, marriage classes and talk about um, diseases and stuff like that instead of just leaving. Because I don't see the real point in just leaving her like in the state that she's in right now. Okay. Okay, so what, what I hear you say is to maintain the marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, and seek counseling and things like that to work through it. Right. Because there's so much help out there now, you know, that you can get your partner or your spouse, you can go together. If you really want it to work, you know, I would say stay in the marriage and see what can be remedied first before you decide to leave. Okay, so what do you think, Pam? Um, I'm going to go just a little bit different from Sister Carolyn. Um, because if I heard correct in the letter that she has had uh, previous battles with addiction that That's she was able to overcome and um, through treatment, but with this latest battle uh, of alcoholism, um, he said in his letter that she has refused to go back to treatment. Mm -hmm. 
So um, when you're in that situation and then they have a three-year-old child together, um, he, and he's, he, he's talking about leaving, but he didn't say leave with the child. It, it sounded like he said he would leave, but he would, you know, but he would leave the mom and the child. And that that would not be a good thing if you know that the mother is in uh, an uncontrolled state, then that leaves the child in danger. Um, because she may go into one of these bouts one of these binges and get drunk and black out and who knows what may happen to the child in that type of situation. Um, I think he needs to talk to her again, but maybe he needs to give her an ultimatum that you need to either go into treatment or I'm going to remove myself and our child for our child's safety. Um, she, it, it, it appears that she, she, needs, she needs motivation to get and um, she needs motivation to get therapy. She's going to have to do something. This is not a good situation. Uh, for the marriage. It's not a good situation for the child. And you can still love someone, but sometimes you have to give that tough love um, in order for them to um, come to a decision about what they want for their lives and what type of life they want to have. Um, and I don't know what happened in her previous epi episodes, but there's a root in there somewhere mm -hmm. that she has not gotten to in her previous treatment. There is a root to why she is doing this behavior, why she's putting herself at risk and putting her husband at risk. I know it's one side of the story, but you know, he, all we heard was him say he hasn't stepped out. So he doesn't know why he would have gotten gonorrhea. It had to have come from her. Um, and so there, there's got to be a route to why she's uh, doing all of this risky behavior. She's putting her life at risk uh, because you don't know what, when you're in a blacked out state, you don't know what's gonna happen or uh, what someone may do to you. You know, she's, she's lucky she didn't, uh, if she was driving, have a car accident and kill herself or kill somebody else, or that, you know, somebody robbed or raped or could have killed her. You know, she's, she's doing all of this risky behavior um, that's putting herself in danger, her child in danger, her husband in danger. The, he needs to find a way to convince her to get treatment, to get to the root of why she's doing this behavior. And if she won't agree to do the work to, to the root and to, to uh, uh, break free of this addiction, then he, he has a, a, another decision to make. How can he protect his child and himself? Thank you for that, Pam. That that was very in depth. That was very in depth. Um, my opinion on this issue: the wife's addiction has caused bodily harm to her husband through the transmission of the STI, and at that point, the husband needs to make a decision to, I'm going to use Pam's word, give an ultimatum 
to do rehab and to allow it to be inpatient rehab because it's probably going to need to be that intense since she's done different kinds of rehab before or there needs to be a separation. You can tell from the letter that he is grappling with, you can tell from the issue that he is grappling with whether to go or to stay. And he's more on the side of staying. Even though she's given him this disease and this is only one side of the story, he wants, he's more concerned about, okay, well, was she right? Um, that was his first thought. Or then he said, okay, is she lying? Should I leave or should I stay? But his main thing was out of concern for her. And that's the husband. Having that mindset is the right mindset. And until the you get to the bottom of what the issue is, I think she may go from one addiction to the next. So along the lines of what Pam said, getting to the root of it, getting to the bottom of it. So that when she comes out of this rehab, there won't need to be any more because she would have she would have dealt she would have dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And um, so yes, it is it is reckless self destructive behavior, okay. reckless and self destructive. So Carolyn, look like you want to say something else. You know, I was thinking along the lines of for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. That mm -hmm. is why I said what I said, because usually I'm on that other side with Pam. I'm like, you know, cut. <laughs> you know, let her go. But um, I don't know, get a little soft spot about that, because I feel if he left her, she's only going to increase that you know that behavior spiral but, down yeah yeah and then she's going to need other treatments and um like you say definitely inpatient you know uh treatment where she they're going to have to monitor her because you know she's going to have withdrawal symptoms mm -hmm. she's going to mm -hmm. start with that so it has to be a consistent you know effort but i feel like if he left her although he did get sick get you know he got gonorrhea, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave her now. You know, addiction has a lot of different, for lack of a better word right now, a lot of different arms to it. Mm -hmm. The behavior that you choose is really not indicative of what the problem is. Mm -hmm. It's the pacifier mm -hmm. for what, what the hurt is and it could be hurt from some years back it could be hurt from something recent but it's how you deal with that pain um so getting her to deal with the pain would solve a lot of it but it won't be easy because she's now saying that she doesn't want to do she doesn't want to go back to rehab and she refuses to go to AAA um, because those types of situations force you to look at you, force you to look at you. So. Um, and if, we, if we made a comparison, or uh, Amita, if we made a comparison, think about a person on a uh, crack that how much, you know, denial they're in, they don't want the help. Because for one, they don't see the detriments behind it. You know, they don't. And so I would say starting a treatment, at least, to mm -hmm. get help me to understand, like you said, um, what's causing it? How long has it been there? Because like Pam said something about roots. And then, you know, if you let something stay in something long enough, it's all attaching itself to it. And then, like I said, she's going to spiral and there are going to be other additions that she might end up, you know. So, so whatever drove her 
to the addiction that she's in now with the alcohol, I feel like she would go and add to it if she now doesn't, you know, doesn't have anything to live for. Her marriage is gone. And uh, did he say he was going to take the child, Pam? Or well, he said, what, what he did say is, if I stay, at least I always be there to assist, and for and for our daughter, even if she is messing up. So yeah, he 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 wants to provide protection for the daughter, but also in a loving way, um, look out for his wife too. But I want yeah. to say also that um, for him to make a decision to walk, at, at, I won't say walk away forever, but um, as Almeida said, separate. Um, if she continues to refuse to seek treatment or seek counseling, then um, he will probably have to separate himself and the child from her because, um, and that that is the same as being supportive because a lot of times if you stay in that situation and you don't give the person, person with an addiction uh, a motivating reason uh, to seek treatment, like you said, it's a, a, a Carolyn, a, a, a reason to live. Um, well, my reason to live is that I want my family. I don't want to lose my family. So if this addiction is gonna cause me to lose my family, then yes, I'm gonna do whatever steps I need to take um, in order to keep my family. And, um, and so he would still be there. She would be getting treatment. He would still be there with the child. They would be supportive and loving um, in person, and that would be wonderful. But you also have to give people consequences. You know, if you refuse, if you continue to refuse um, to seek help, then I cannot continue to stay in this situation, exposing myself and exposing our daughter uh, to your addiction. It's a danger. And um, so I, I'm going to have to remove myself. And when you get things together, we're, we're still here. We're still here for you. We love you. But in order for us to be together as a family, you've got to get help. Yeah. 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 And I do agree when you look at, you know, at, you know, to me, if you look at it, you know, if the addiction is, you know, on a continuum, of course, at some point, you know, if she constantly, constantly refuses because he can't make her go. So I can see where he would, you know, if he's tried out, he could to get her to go. It is totally something different. Then you have no other choice, but, you know, to remove yourself from that situation. So I understand what you're saying on that. That's a very good point too. So to our listeners, we have looked at this situation from a lot of different angles and brought out some good points concerning it. Um, and we know that love is not perfect and being with someone that has an addiction um, is very trying. This is, this is not anything foreign. A lot of people deal with those situations in their marriages, in their homes, in their families. So this may help somebody, some of our listeners, to consider different options on this love journey. So that was that was really good. That was really good. Um, so that's that's our first segment and it's called Only One Side. So that was very interesting. We are going to transition to our topic for the evening. And it is 
embracing change with openness and wonder. Embracing change with openness and wonder. This topic is very timely because of the times that we live in today. It is prevalent in our world news. It is prevalent in our careers. It is prevalent in our relationships one with the other. So embracing change. Who would like to start on that topic for this evening? Well, I will um, just say a few words because um, I'm not quite sure what direction we're going to go in, but um, change is inevitable. Change is a given, but there are a lot of people who don't like change. You get comfortable in whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's a good situation or whether it's a bad situation. It's a situation that you know. And so you're comfortable being placed that you know. And the idea of something new or something different happening can bring about anxiety. But we have to do our self-talk and, um, and allow ourselves to believe that change will come. It will lead to better things. It will lead to higher levels. You may not be able to see ahead of what the final outcome will be, but most often change is good. It is good. And we need to allow ourselves to stay open, um, as you said, to embrace the change, explore the change, and wait for um, wait for the, the final manifestation that comes from the change. So okay. I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to talk about how do people embrace change when it's not something that they initiate or are in control of. So you can look at it from the vantage point of a termination from a job, a breakup in a relationship. Um, from that standpoint, because it's, 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 it's not something you planned for, most of the time, um, and it's a it's it's a disruption. It's a disruption. So in that type of situation, Carolyn, do you have any insight to how to maneuver and move through that kind of change? Oh well, my mind. I was kind of like Pam. I didn't know which direction to go, but thank you, Abby, for putting some perspective on it. First thing with me, I can speak for me. Um, I try to have um, acceptance, first of all, because I know change is hard. By nature, I feel like all humans battle with, you know, some issue, have some issues about change because you take me out of my comfort zone now. Now I got to try to go and reset my mind. Uh, there's fear of the unknown. And you start pulling in all these variables. Mm -hmm. You know, if they do this, but this, but this, but that, you know, they should have just left everything like it was. It was working. Okay. 
it does not mean that that new thing won't work because we so accustomed to saying, I don't know why, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, that's that's a good perception to have. But why not make it better? And I'll use my baking um, <laughs> if, I, if I can just use okay. something that I know that I've <laughs> had to experience with change. I had my my niece who who uh texted me about a week ago or maybe two weeks now yeah I know I don't do time so right right it's she okay. asked for <laughs> mint chocolate chip cookies and Ooh. she sent me uh Instagram picture for some reason by me not being on Instagram I could not open up that you know I couldn't mm-hmm. open up the, the mm-hmm. uh, app and so anyway I'm just thinking like she Say, Auntie, just do me like six mint chocolate chips and do me with well, a husband likes oatmeal. So do him some oatmeal. We know I had that. You know, I got this. So, because I do oatmeal all the time. But um, she said, the recipe, she said, I'm going to send it to you another way and it's going to show you the recipe. Well, when I looked at the, the ingredients, y'all, it's pretty much the same. Only thing I had to add was some green food coloring and some peppermint extract. So you can see how one small thing have you thinking about all these variables and you're like, oh, okay, what is the, what if I don't do a good job? And so as I went from one place on my job to another, I was like, oh my God, I knew how to be an assistant teacher because I did it for 17 years. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was like, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm good, you know, I'm comfortable. But when I was asked to go apply for a teacher position, I'm like, I ain't going. Because I have this thing where I don't like to sit in front of people to do interviews. I feel like I'm just going to say something real crazy. (laughs) And so I wouldn't go, but this lady just kept at me. She was like, oh, you going? I said, no, I'm not. She said, they got a deadline in two days. You Uh going to apply. I'm like, no, I I ain't going. Because I was comfortable. In those 17 years, you would have thought me being kind of a little ambitious. I, I didn't, you know, I stay right there. I'm not doing it. She said, you going. If I got to drag you by your hair, you going. And this lady wouldn't let up on me. I still call her today. She's an older lady. She still works for the program. She said, you going. Y'all, I must have stayed up late. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm too nice. I must have stayed up probably till four or five in the morning trying to figure out what I would say in the interview, how I would do it. And let me tell you, I would have this is the God honest truth. I did all that reading, all that study, going back looking at those theories and about young children. And baby, I got in that interview. <laughs> she said, Go just tell me a little bit about yourself. The good went blank. <laughs> None but blackness. So you can't really, you can't just lean on your, you know, your own strength and your own power when you are embracing change. You got to be open. And God said, you know, you never asked me. You just got in here, feel like you's gonna show out. And I'm telling you, she said, you don't know your name and stuff, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, God, you gonna do me like this? You know, this is important to me. <laughs> I did want to come. I'm talking about blank, y'all. This is, I can't figure out why God allowed that to happen, but he was letting me know, I guess. Don't don't try to go in and prepare yourself. You never came to me and asked me. Mm-hmm. And so I told him, I said, y'all give me one minute. And I kind of dropped my head a little bit. I said, Lord, let your greatness take over. Baby, I went to do it. And I was told it was one of the best interviews that they had ever had. And wow. that they now would set a new precedence of how they do interviews. It was only God, but I'm just saying the fear of the unknown, me walking up there, baby, with my papers and thinking I'm finna show out and went blank. I can't <laughs> tell the folks my name. So this was a big deal for me embracing, you know, coming from an assistant teacher, going into a teacher, because now mm-hmm. I gotta be the one to run the classroom. I don't have to sit in nobody's shadow which I was mighty comfortable with. I mean, mm-hmm. you could have been a teacher. I could have stayed behind you another 10 years, you know. <laughs> I just didn't help you do whatever. But I had to really, you know, open my mind and understand mm-hmm. that 
Mm-hmm. If it's if it's good, it can be better. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if, if it's better, it can be the best. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. we, we limit ourselves too much when it comes to change. And baby, when I did um when I got the job, I got the call a couple of days later and I went into it still fearful, still jittery, you know, not knowing how I was fitting into this new group of teachers. It was a whole lot of uh, things that I thought about. But to embrace change, you must first be open. You got to accept what may come. Mm-hmm. We don't know what may come. You have to be mm-hmm. open to what may come. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you go backwards with it. You might take one step forward and you might take two steps back. So what? Get up and do what? Dust yourself off and what? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. That doesn't define you because you fail. I fail at recipes all the time. People. I even post some of my stuff like, see, my cake broke up. It just goes to show you, no matter how good you think you are in the things, you know, God can still allow things because He allows it since He sees the end from the beginning. He knew I was going to break this cake up and I was on time. And then this lady needed this cake within like an hour. And when it came out and I dumped it, I did everything, I tapped on the pan and it broke all up. I didn't know what to do. This lady was waiting on the cake on her husband. And I said, Lord, I know you could have helped me to keep that cake together. So I'm just saying I'll let you say it's okay to embrace change. Mm-hmm. So you can grow. Not so much of all the elements around you, but so you can grow. Yeah. And when yeah. I say you, I mean I, you, us, you know. Yeah. All of yeah. Them. One one thing that I remember from uh, when I was younger, people would always say the only thing constant is change. And I hmm. said, that just doesn't make any sense to me. That, that doesn't make any sense. The only thing constant is change. As I matured, and that is after college, when I got a little bit of sense, that I understood change is going to happen And it's going to happen in all different areas of your life. Mm -hmm. When, and and Carolyn, you brought out such a good good point, acceptance. Acceptance allows you to move along the continuum of the change spectrum. So it allows you to move from stuck to step one. It allows you to move from fear and anger to step one. So accepting of the change is such a, an important part of the process. And when you say, okay, we've been doing it like this all this time at work. And it may have worked, it may have not worked, but it was something we were used to. Let's see what this new thing is going to be. Let's see what this new thing is going to be. And human human nature wants us to stay in the comfort zone. But when we say, let's see what this new thing is going to be, it just opens it up. It just opens it up to all kinds of possibilities. And so that allows you to wonder about is it going to be better than what we had is it going to be worse than what we had is it going to be more efficient is it going to be less efficient will it save me some time in doing this so that i could focus on something else um and when you accept then you can allow a whole lot of other things to enter into your mind so that your mind won't be stuck, so that your mind won't be stuck. Um, When I first started working out, and that working out is still a journey, I did different things. I did a boot camp, which was with a group of people. I did by myself. I did with like four or five people had a trainer with a couple of people with the trainer. So I tried all kinds of different ways because I wanted to get some results that were going to be better for me. And 
I had to put myself in the frame of mind that me not moving is not getting me where I wanted to be. It wasn't getting me where I wanted to be physically. And because it wasn't giving me where I wanted to be physically, it made me tired. It made me tired. It made me sluggish. Um, it made me not as social. And I am, I love people. I love going. I love doing. But when you are obese, and that's where I was, I was very obese. And it cut off like, okay, I want to do this, but girl, I'm so tired. This weight is weighing me down. So I had to push through that to get to the other side. Now, in that process, I gained some weight back. I lost some weight. I gained some weight. I lost some weight. But I, I'm still at, I can do this. I, I may not do it consistently. I may not do it all the time, but I have done it and I can do it. So it, it helped me to go down the road of what the possibilities of physical activity can do for me. And when I was working out on all cylinders and hitting the tens and doing it three times a week and you know an hour each time, Girl, you can tell me that. <laughs> I, I was everywhere. <laughs> I was outside. I was, inside, I was everywhere. But that had to come because I made up my mind, this is going to be it. So when I was with the trainer, I was able to allow myself. When he said, okay, we're going to do some boxing tomorrow. I was like, okay. I wasn't even scared. When I started boxing, he said, you box like a girl. What are you doing? I was like, I am a girl. <laughs> he said, I mean, you know, why are you swinging out? What are you doing? I was like, I have never boxed before. <laughs> so you got to teach me how to do this. I didn't even so get mad. I was just, I just be like, this is not my forte, but I am willing for you to teach me. So that's the example that I use because otherwise I would I'm a big cry baby. I'd be like, he hurt my feelings. He said, I box like a girl, but I am a girl. So why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> that was that motivation you needed. And I hope the audience was listening because I took in all that you said. You know, my thing is getting started out. We we do salads at work. We do smoothies. We do different things sometimes. And I'll be on track and I'll lose five or six pounds and baby, the next week I'm back in the dump. So what you just said, that's going to help me. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try again. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with this right eye tonight, but I'm going to try again because that was so motivational. What you you have no idea oh. if whoever was listening, if they whoever was listening, I took in all of that. Thank you for that. You that are was, welcome. That, that was like eating some chocolate cake. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> that and, was really and I, good. And I am, by nature, I don't have good coordination, but I was so determined that I was going to reach those goals that I had set for myself. I said, I don't even care. I don't, I don't care what they say about me in the gym. I don't care what they say about me in the park because I know what my goal is. I had a chart on my uh, refrigerator and I was I was working that chart, baby. And I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, this is going to have to happen. So um, I think when I accepted the fact that I have to move in mm -hmm. order to get to where I wanted to be, then I was, I was able to allow myself to try different things. I went from walking to running. I, I ran about two or three 5K um, marathon, uh, marathon uh, 5K runs. I um, learned how to box a little bit. I um, learned how to use some free weights and I, I, I ain't know nothing about none of that stuff. So and just a lot of different things that I learned. I learned water aerobics. 
-hmm. and I didn't know how to swim. So I was like, okay, everybody else in the pool ain't dying. I guess I ain't going to die either. Right. Half of them didn't know how to swim either. So it was just a matter of just being, being open and mm -hmm. scripturally being available. When you're available, a lot of things happen for you. It's by, by, by being available. And I think uh, with your example, Almeida, which was a great example, uh, it also shows another aspect of change. There is change that you have control of, and there are some changes that you don't have control of. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, both of those bring about a level of fear, but when you're in control of, when you're making a decision to make a change that only you can do, only you can get yourself to, um, to exercise or to reach. And uh, like you said, you have to embrace it. You have to um, uh, allow yourself to try new things. You have to allow yourself, you have to allow yourself to win but also you have to allow yourself to fail you you know you may not reach every goal or you may uh have to take a step back and reevaluate mm -hmm. but you're you're in control you're making the decision um and and that makes it so much easier i think to be open to change um the change, the changes that come uh, from situations out of our control, um, those are more scary mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. are more fearful, mm -hmm. but um, most changes, or I'll say, I'll, I'll say all changes, because they really are, all changes are ultimately for our good. Hmm. It may not seem that way in the beginning. Um, let's say you weren't planning on being fired, but if you got fired from your job, that's huge and that's scary. Yeah. How am I going to pay my bills? How, uh, you know, how, uh, what can I find another mm -hmm. job? Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's a very stressful, very, um, uh, anxiety driven situation. Yeah, but I've been there before. Been yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> but we have to keep in mind that absolutely all yeah. change ultimately <laughs> for our good. And yes, we have to will. have that belief, you know, and we have to hold on to that. And um and if you do that instead of running from the change, but okay, well, I just got fired. Well, that's their loss. Cause I know I'm an excellent employee. I know <laughs> that job will come, but change also brings about self-reflection because you may be on the op opposite side. Okay, I got fired from the job. I got fired because you came in late. Um, you got fired because you, instead of a 30 minute lunch break, you took an hour. Um, you didn't turn your work in on time. You know, you, you, have to, you have to look at the situation truthfully and openly and um, so like in that situation, if you know there were things that you didn't do that you were supposed to do, and that's why you got fired, then when your next job comes, because you will have another uh, another opportunity, mm -hmm. then you know the things that you need to change within yourself to make sure that you're successful on that new job. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, all change will be for our good. All right. Wow. That's good. Ooh, 
That's some good free yeah. information. That's good. Yeah. I, I thank God for y'all wisdom and if you know for your you know encouragement, not just to me, but to all our listeners, because y'all said some really good stuff. I think we all sprinkle some salt and pepper on it. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> Having people to understand because I hear that so much. Even I have been the uh, initiator of, of saying stuff like that. You know, I don't know why they had to change it because it just, you know, it was fine like that. But like she said, Pam said, let you know, let yourself be able to win. And if you fail, let yourself be able to fail. I know. Yeah, I guess this, this, this is I my last used. little segment of, of uh, commentary. So, have you spent time with very creative people and how they look at something? Um, we look at problems, normal people, to say, oh, that just drives me crazy. That just makes me sick. A creative person may figure out or think about how to solve that problem. So they live in a constant state of what if. They live in a constant state of wonder. That's where inventions come from. You know, inventions... um, come from there was an issue there was a problem let's solve it so we had the house phone and people say well I'm not at home all the time I still need to get I I still need to have people to contact me so then that's where the cell phones came in somebody's like "Mm, I have to figure this out how can I still get my phone calls but I'm not at home somebody had to figured it out oh we pages. huh do you remember the pager the pager mm-hmm. uh yes, yes. <laughs> then we went from the candlelight to the flashlights to the lights in the house we went from the outhouse to the indoor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. you know the people who who see a different way live in a state of wonder because they go like hmm I wonder if this will work I wonder why this happens when this happens I wonder if I mix this chemical with that chemical you know that's how we get makeup girl (laughs) that's how we get us some lipstick that's how we get all these different stuff because somebody lives in a state of wonder mm-hmm. to say, hey, what about this? Would this work? So um, they're not, they, I wouldn't say they aren't afraid of change, but they are more interested in solving the problem than fearing change. So that's just, I mean, this little two cents word. It's worth a million, uh, worth a million, though. It's so good. <laughs> and my mind goes to, uh, and I'm going to be quiet, Steve Harvey. He is one of my biggest motivators, besides Jamal Bryant. But uh, <laughs> Steve Harvey is one of my biggest motivators. Why? Because he tells the truth. He tells the good and the bad, you know. And he get really, really mad with people when they give up, so. Sometimes I listen to him early in the morning, you know, and I'm in my car on my way to work, and I'll be like, wow. He said, I can't stand people that that don't try. And mm-hmm. I heard you talk about wonder. That's how things get in. Mm-hmm. We give mm-hmm. up too quick. So mm-hmm. that's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love mm-hmm. how uh, Steve Harvey talked about his life. I mean, there, you know, he had been married. Uh, uh, a couple of times that ended in divorce. Um, he, uh, I think he flunked out of college. He he wanted to be in comedy. 
He had to sleep in his car uh, for a, 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 a while because he couldn't afford an apartment. But because he never gave up, you know, he is at the level that he is now. The, the, you know, the same with Tyler Perry. When he did his first play, um, nobody came. I think he said a pipe burst and flooded the basement of the theater that um, he had uh, secured to do the play. He had to sleep in his car. And those were all terrible changes that anybody else um, would have probably given up on and taken a nine to five job, you know, uh, just, to, just to pay a few bills. But because he persevered, he is at the, the heights that he is now. Mm -hmm. Not only did he make his dream come true, he's made, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people's dreams come true and i'm gonna say this last i'm gonna say this last thing i um uh, he made he he <laughs> told a story about how he was so um he was so humbled and at the same time proud that um he was able to hire cicely tyson to be yes. in his films and she thanked him. She said, you have revived, you have revived my career. And yeah, yeah. He, put I in, that. he put her in, um, why did I get married part two? Mm -hmm. He said she only worked one day and he paid her a million dollars. Yeah. For that one day's work. Yeah. He to yeah. make sure that she was comfortable and that she had no anxiety about um, how she would sustain her uh, later years. And, you know, Ooh, you, just don't know what, you just don't know what change will do for yourself yeah. and for other people. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Do it. We're going to end on that note because that's a good note. <laughs> To change lives and change your life and change other people's lives. Woo, that's such a blessing. Mm -hmm. So to our listening audience, whether you're uh, doing on YouTube or any other means, what's the, what's the favorite thing on any social media platform? We <laughs> appreciate you. And make sure you share this podcast. Um, invite right. a friend, tell a friend, and be a friend to us by sharing. And also, um, we thank you for listening to us. We hope that some of the things that we have said will help you along this life's journey because we're all on this journey together. We love y'all. And we'll see you the next time. Good night. Bye. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your life. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.